Hi, this is Henry DeVries, and I have a special guest with us today, Tom Searcy. Hi, I uh, want to talk just a little bit about publishing and writing books. I've uh, had this amazing history of, uh, of doing this. Uh, the first book I wrote was maybe, I don't want to say an accident, it was actually just one of those decisions that we made along the way, and it was called Whale Hunting, How to Land Big Sales and Transform Your Company, and it did really well. Um, we uh, started off with Wiley and Sons and we did that book. And uh, like I said, it did really well. Um, however, the challenge is that working with big publishers uh, don't, does not always mean that you're going to get big support, big, uh, uh, I guess you would call promotions or whatever. Uh, really, you are your own marketing department. We didn't really realize that. We kind of thought, well, you're a top five publisher. You're probably out there pushing my book. And their answer is, uh, no, we'd really like you to push the book, but we'd like to keep the revenue ourselves. <laughs> so I learned a lot from that particular uh, experience that uh, when you work with big publishers, you should lower your expectations. I published a couple of other books in between um, along the way, and I kind of self-published them. I'm proud of the books. They were good. Um, I may be the largest buyer of my books. Um, so I can count on that because again, I didn't have good promotion. I didn't have good partner. I didn't have uh, someone who really understood what it means to move a book out into the marketplace, to leverage it, to develop uh, your overall business plan. Um, and so I, I just had a misconception. Um, I just thought books sold themselves. I don't know. Maybe I was uh, the woman out of Twilight who went out there and wrote, wrote a first novel and ta-da, she was worth a gazillion dollars and everybody bought it after that. And it didn't matter the fact that it was a terrible book because by that time everyone had bought it. Um, I was hoping to be discovered as the waiter inside of a diner someplace and Steven Spielberg would walk in there and just say, oh, you're lovely. Let's go ahead and put you into the next uh, movie. It didn't happen. Books don't seem to move that way. Along uh, comes the uh, McGraw-Hill story. And I'll, be, I'll be very straightforward about this. First of all, I wrote a, uh, an ink um, blog, and it was called How to Close a Deal Like Warren Buffett. And I wrote about 600 words of it, and I'll be candid, I wrote it because I was on timeline. I had to get it out. So I'm from Omaha, Warren Buffett's from Omaha. I know a little bit about how he does business, so I wrote this uh, this blog, and it was one of a blog a week that I wrote for Inc. Magazine, or I believe it actually at that time was Fortune Magazine, and didn't think much about it. 60 days later, one of the publishers from McGraw-Hill called me up and said, hey, uh, love what you wrote, would like to talk to you about writing a book. I said, no, nah, I'm not very interested in doing that. Uh, I've seen you guys before, and I don't trust you. My heart has been broken, and so I'm going to go on and do something else. Well, then about another 60 days later, she calls back. And she says, what do you think about writing the book now? And I'm thinking, my heart's still broken. I'm very busy. I've got a lot uh, going on. I'm not going to do business with you guys. 60 days later, she calls back and she says, we really think that this book would do well nationally and internationally. Um, people, Warren Buffett continues to be, you know, very, very interesting to lots and lots of people. We think you ought to write this book. And I said, okay, I've got a caveat. I said, I want a co-author. Um, and the co-author I want is Henry DeVries. Uh, first of all, Henry is somebody I trust. I know he and I have worked together on other projects. He's been kind of in the background a little bit. I want him in the foreground. I want him side by side with me on the front um, because he brings that. And they're like, well, this, that, and the other thing. I said, no, it's okay. I don't blame you for not wanting to have two co-authors. Who could blame you? So, um, but I won't write it without Henry and I won't write it without giving him credit, uh, but that's okay. Not my problem. I've already told you no, no two times. Uh, this third time doesn't hurt me any more than it did the first two times I said it. Um, and so McGraw Hill picked up the book and immediately Henry and I started, uh, working on it, writing it. Probably a little bit of an overstatement. Let's just say Henry started working on it and Henry started writing it, which was a little bit more accurate. And he was mostly steak and I was mostly salt and pepper. But we worked together on this book. As a matter of fact, we, we locked in at one point because we were just at a point where 
Tom wasn't helping enough and Henry and Tom really needed to come together on some pieces. And we locked ourselves in a hotel um, suite for like two or three days. And we just laid it out truly like big whiteboard paper on, you know, up against the walls and down on the bed. And we take long walks, you know, not long romantic walks by the beach, although we could have. But uh, the fact is we just were working and thinking and trying to get this all put together. And of course, Henry at the end of it said, Tom, got it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Tom, you know, I call that uh, approach where you lock yourself away for three days in a hotel, the misery approach after the Stephen King novel and movie of the same name. So we did the misery strategy to get the book done. The, the best thing you say about the misery strategy is we laughed a lot and we ate well. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that was our, our great claim to fame, except for the fact that the book got out um, and it got out on time. Um, and uh, McGraw-Hill received it well, uh, and they did what we anticipated, which was very little. Um, but Henry, um, to all of his credit, uh, had a marketing plan behind this and had marketing ideas behind this and was, by gosh, not going to let this thing just fall to the side and started beginning the process of promotion. Uh, and the book did very well. But what was interesting, and it was said by McGraw-Hill, but... Um, I don't think they did much with it, but, but in the end, international, uh, every once in a while, Henry and I would get a, a, a royalty check from going into China or going into India or going into Saudi Arabia. That's my favorite one. Here we are. Um, yeah. We, there we are. I hear and, we're great in Chinese. We lose well, a little something in the original. Henry noticed a couple of typos on like this page, like 121, but he tried not to say anything to the Chinese about it because his ability to read Chinese is so strong. <laughs> anyway, um, but we wound up in so many English speaking uh, languages. There's over 3 billion, I think maybe it's even three and a half billion people who have access to this book. And it all starts off with the idea that you need to promote your own book and you need to have someone who's dedicated and thinks about that and says, we need to get this on the market but because it's simple. The publisher won't do it. Um, the publisher, the publishing industry, as far as the big five or 10 or whatever, they've been shredded. They don't really exist as far as promoting arm and the entire retail environment for books has been shredded. So, you know, if you put a book out there and it's a superstar, um, chances are what you have is a good promotion arm from, you know, in this case, I had a great partner in Henry who made that all work. And it was um, amazing uh, to have that happen and more amazing because I'd done the Wiley uh, deal and not to Wiley and Sons. I'm not faulting them uh, per se. Actually, I kind of am. But, um, and I've done the self-publishing side and McGraw-Hill, um, candidly was a lot like self-publishing you can put the big little st the little sticker down below it says mcgraw hill or random house or somebody else down at the bottom they're not going to do anything to promote the book that that was my experience because i'd been with one of the big folks and i'd been on my own and being with mcgraw hill and other publishers like them was a lot more like being on my own except for a lot less money and henry and i've just we've been very very uh, fortunate um, our partnership has been awesome. Working together has been great as far as just the idea of creating um, and integrating, getting a somewhat consistent voice and yet identifying that both authors are on the front of the book. And so you, you do need to show some distinction, uh, distinction in voice. All of those things worked out in the work that we did prior um, to publishing and then culminating in uh, the misery approach and then putting together the final man manuscript that went into McGraw-Hill with almost no um, edits, which is like unheard of. So um, I guess I, I'm very, very grateful uh, to Henry. Uh, I was not surprised, but so pleased with the way and the process by which we came up with this final uh, product. It's now, this book is probably half the planet has access to it. Um, and we've been paid royalties for it, except that we got paid probably, I don't know, one fourth as much as we had been 
And considering that Henry did all the promo work for it, um, that doesn't feel so good. Um, but um, Henry and I will do another book together. Um, it's just too much fun and uh, too successful to not. So that's what I tell you about Henry. Um, that would be what I'm telling you about uh, working uh, with IBI and getting uh, your books put together, written, promoted, and out into the marketplace. Thank you so much, Tom. You're a member of the Million Dollar Roundtable with the National Speakers Association, a consultant who's actually built a million dollar business from this. And thank you so much for having me along the journey, for the journey. Thank you. Thanks.